Reverend Jason McGuire, it's good to see you. Thanks for joining us again. Thanks, Liz. It's good to have you here. So, okay, the sticking point at this moment on gay marriage appears to be these issues of religious protections, right? There are concerns. We heard the majority leader talk about that today. The specifics are a little bit of a moving target. So could you fill in those gaps for us? Well, I can tell you from our perspective, as we look at the current language, and, and let me be clear that no amount of uh, amendments to the bill, a uh, new language is going to make the idea of same-sex marriage something that we can accept. But with that off to the side for just a moment, there are some significant religious freedoms concerns that are not included in the current language. One of those concerns is town clerks, town justices, that maybe for 20, 30 years, they've been on a career path, they've, they've chosen this, never dreaming they'd have to violate uh, their religious freedoms, their right of conscience, and now if this were to pass, They've got to decide, am I going to give up my career and a bill that's just recently been passed or surrender my religious freedoms? That's a concern. Okay, but there are other, there's another concern here, which is, of course, the, the issue of discrimination. I mean, when you are in the public forum, there are laws that there are, even in the private forum, if you're a private business owner, you're, it's not legal for you to discriminate against people based on their sexuality or their sexual preference. Isn't that well, true? We've long argued that same-sex couples have a right to do whatever they want in the privacy of their own home, but they don't have the right to redefine marriage for the rest of society. And so this is one of the implications that needs to be concerned, needs to be looked at, is how will this impact other people? Uh, it's not just the same-sex couples, but all of society needs to take into account what will happen if we allow this. But do you believe that those act, the kind of language that we're talking about right now actually could stand up to a constitutional challenge? Because it seems likely either way here, if it, you're going to sue if this passes. I, I mean, I'm, I, tell me if I'm being presumptuous. If, if same-sex marriage is legal in New York, you're going to sue, aren't you? I think in either case, this is certainly going to be headed to the courts. Right. And that's an action people will be looking at. Right. So is there some way you really believe, is there some other state that has managed to put in protections that have withstood constitutional challenges? Well, I tell you, one of the encouraging things about living in the empire state is that we lead the way. And so uh, even if it perhaps has not occurred in other places, there's no reason why we cannot include current language here in New York. And I'll tell you that the courts here, uh, the, the Hernandez decision that came out uh, surprised me. I did not expect, quite honestly, to get such a favorable decision regarding marriage out of the New York court, and yet we did. And so I think this is something we're willing to look at. Remind us what that is. Well, Hernandez really looked at the issue of marriage, and it, and it really upheld the fact that marriage under New York law is between a man and a woman. Um, Quite frankly, there were a number of people on my side of the issue that thought we would never get such a positive ruling out of a New York court, and yet uh, we were given that victory. And so who knows what the courts may find in recognizing the individual right to practice their freedom of religion. But the decision was appealed. Decision? Well, this is the Hernandez decision that stands. Uh, there are a bunch of other cases you're referring to that deal with different levels of court. Right. Right. Like, do, do you, the, there seems to be sort of this idea at the moment that the opposition is pushing very hard to get these protections in because they see that it's possible that, that gay, the legalization of gay marriage would be inevitable and so therefore you need to get the protections in at the front end because you're worried that it's actually the train is leaving the station. Well, I think some are reading too much into that, to be perfectly frank. I do not believe that gay marriage is inevitable in New York. Uh, if it was, we'd be packing it up and going home. Uh, this fight continues. Uh, we do not believe it is inevitable. One of the things that needs to be kept in mind is Republicans have to look at a re-election in 2012. And there are short-term political ramifications that they have to take into account. You cannot thumb your nose at the base and hope to return to the majority. Uh, that's just a fact of life that Republicans have to understand. But beyond that, there are societal implications that deal with same-sex marriage. You know, we're going to be celebrating Father's Day weekend here, and, and that's, you know, a good time for us to be reflecting on the fact that even a secular culture recognizes the importance of both moms and dads well, in a Father's child's Day life. Well, Father's Day is not, is a Hallmark holiday. It's like not a codified religious holiday. It's not Christmas, That's exactly example. my point. So even a secular culture recognizes the importance, the cultural impact of moms at Mother's Day and fathers at Father's Day. We don't call it Parent One Day and Parent Two Day, but we celebrate the fact that there are moms and dads well, that make unique Well, but you can read that both ways, though. I mean, nor does Father's Day say, it doesn't say one mom, two mom, but it doesn't say anything about why not two moms either or why not two dads. I mean, His, Father's Day could be a celebration of dads. Historically, has recognized the value of moms and dads in a child's life. And I think that's reflected. There's no doubt there, there, there's a special place uh, in, in, in the hearts of many children for their moms. Uh, but let's face it, there's a special place for dad as well. Reverend, do you believe that gay people can be good parents? 
You know, I believe that there are gay people that certainly love their children and they're doing the best they can, but I think that public policy ought to reflect what is ideal, and that's what we're striving for. And I believe that moms and dads are the ideal situation in which to raise a child. And public policy ought to reflect that. I don't think we should be lowering marriage, but we ought to be holding it in high esteem. So, but to follow that out to its logical conclusion, then, do you believe that actually gay people shouldn't be allowed to adopt? I mean, it seems like you're going in that direction, right? I mean, and well, isn't that discriminatory? I will tell you that in New York State law already, unmarried intimate partners can adopt. So that legal question has already uh, been laid out there. But, you know, we just believe that society ought to uphold the fact that moms and dads are really uh, an important part of, of raising children. You know, it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, when I go out to buy a car, there are some things I look for that are optional equipment, you know, and I like cruise control or I like a moonroof, those kinds of things. Then there's some standard equipment, transmission, tires in the car. We're creating a culture today in which we're looking to buy a car that may come with air conditioning but not a transmission. That's not a good thing for the state of New York. I, I, I think I'm following that, but I find it's a little bit of a difficult analogy, but I think I get it. Are you, do you feel satisfied that you are getting your message to the Senate Republicans and more importantly perhaps to the governor? I mean, there has been a suggestion. We've seen Cynthia Nixon. We've seen Sean Avery from the New York Rangers. We have seen Mayor Bloomberg, who donated close to a million dollars to the Senate Republicans, come in and sit with them in a private conference. Now, today we saw Bishop DiMarzio from Brooklyn, obviously, so you're getting a religious voice into the conference. but. Do you feel that you're getting enough access? And have you even spoken to the governor, actually? Well, you know, we've requested a meeting with the governor. We have not been granted that meeting. And so that should be a concern. Uh, the governor has promised to meet with people on both sides of this issue. Uh, his office has turned down a request for a meeting. So that is a concern. Um, but you know what? Reality is, I don't think I'm going to flip the governor in this position. And no, so but if there's a discussion the about religious protections, I mean, you are a member of the opposition. You, the, do you believe that the Senate Republicans are adequately representing your side of, of things when you talk about religious protection? Oh, I think so. I have confidence in the Senate Republicans and the work that they're doing. I think one of the reasons why this uh, conferencing has been going on so long is that Senate Republicans are having an open, honest, and heartfelt conversation, not just about the issue of same-sex marriage, but ultimately about the societal implications that if this were to become law. You don't think actually what they're really discussing are the political implications of this? Oh, I think there's certainly that going on as well. I'm not naive to that. But I, I do know that some of those uh, in that conference are really standing up for traditional values, and they are speaking out to the fact that kids do best and raised by a mom and a dad. If today there was a vote, there's been suggestions by various different members that they believe it would pass, that the question is actually if there's a feeling inside the conference that it should or should not come to the floor, that that's the actual question, right? That there are five, maybe as many as five members who are actually willing to vote yes. Do you believe that that's true? I believe the vote will fail if it were to come to the floor today. Uh, my understanding is it is not going to be on the floor today, uh, but it if it were to not. come that's today, great, right? it would fail. Well, I want to thank you very much. Uh, we're going to be seeing you a lot in the halls of the Capitol. I know you brought in reinforcements. I understand there might be a... Uh, a well-known reinforcement showing up on Monday? That's right. Monday, David Tyree will be up here, uh, perhaps most memorable for that famous uh, catch in, in, in the Super Bowl there. Okay, so he'll be well, up here and, and crowds of people showing their support for marriage between a man and a woman. We will look for him and we will look for you, Reverend Jason McGuire. Thanks. Thank you.